So the amount of each fraction obtained by fractional distillation does not usually uh, match the amount of each fraction that is needed. That means we have a demand of about these uh, fractions, whether it is petroleum, whether it is uh, whether it is diesel or kerosene or asphalt. So crude oil often contains more heavier fractions than light fractions. Remember, where will be the light fraction on the top, and where will be the heavier fraction at the bottom? So crude oil often contains more heavier fraction. That is heavier fraction. If you look into uh, page, <coughs> if you look at the page number 277, you'll see the heavier fractions are bitumen, lubricating oil, fuel oil. If you look into your book, page 277. So crude oil contains more of that. And lighter fractions are less. But lighter fractions, like uh, what are the lighter fractions? gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, diesel oil. So these are lighter fractions, are more useful and therefore more desirable. That we want more of the lighter fraction. The, the heavy fractions we don't want. We, we want but very less. We want more of the lighter fractions. So the large hydrocarbon molecules in the heavier fractions can be, we can break it down into smaller, more useful molecules to meet to meet demand for raw materials for fuel and plastic. So what are we going to do? We are going to learn the technique of converting the bigger fractions into smaller fractions because smaller fractions are more useful. For example, petrol is very useful. Uh, then kerosene is very useful. <clears throat> so naphtha is useful. So we want to, and how do we do it? We will do it by the process of Cracking. So that is what we are going to study now. What are we going to study? We are going to study about cracking. So let's move on to the next slide. So catalytic cracking. So you all know what catalyst is. No, catalyst is a substance which will increase or decrease the rate of reaction. Basically, what does it do? It increases the rate of reactions without undergoing any change in itself. So that is a catalyst. So that is a catalyst. So <clears throat> what are we going to do? We are going to uh, use a method of catalytic cracking. We are going to use catalytic cracking or thermal and decompose it, break it down. Large hydrocarbon molecules, we can break it down to smaller mo molecule by using a catalyst. And that is what is known as catalytic cracking. So Let's look at it. The hydrocarbon molecules are heated. See, this is a large, on the top you will see, this is a large molecule. This one, the top one, is a large molecule. All right. And then the hydrocarbon molecules are heated, heated until they turn into vapor. And then uh, we mix it with a catalyst. catalyst. The molecule breaks apart, forming smaller alkenes and alkenes. The alkenes are reactive molecules that are used to make plastic and other chemicals. So what do we do in catalytic cracking? We take the a long hydrocarbon or hydrocarbon which are big and we uh, take the vapors of it and heat it or we take it and heat it until the vapors, until they turn into vapors. We heat it and they turn into vapors. And then we put a catalyst in it. We mix it with a catalyst. First of all, we will heat the molecules until it turn into gaseous vapor. And then we will mix catalyst in it. The then what will happen? The molecules will break apart, forming smaller alkanes and alkenes. Remember, alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbon. So alkenes are very reactive you might remember and alkenes we can use for making plastics and other chemicals let's move on to the next slide so alkenes are family of hydrocarbon compounds with general formula c and h2 n you remember this is naphtha very big how many are there 10 of them 10 carbon so we call it as decane this is decane c10 h22 very big hydrocarbon and 
decaying from naphtha fraction. This we obtain from which fr uh, fraction? Naphtha. Remember naphtha. If you go to the drawing, you will see naphtha just below gasoline in the diagram. Just below gasoline. On page 277, you will see just below gasoline is naphtha. So naphtha decaying comes from naphtha and we can crack it. We can break it down uh, to form pentane. Pentane we use for what? To use in petrol. We can break it down to propane and ethene. See how many hydrocarbons we can break decaying into. We can break it into pentane, C5H12. We can break it into propane and we can break it into ethene. How can we break it? By catalytic cracking. Do you remember? We were just talking about it. So a larger hydrocarbon which is of not so much use can be broken into smaller hydrocarbon which is more useful fraction by catalytic cracking. So this see how it is broken down. Decane is broken down, broken down into pentane, propene and ethene. Are you okay? Did you get it? Yeah, so let's understand it. So we can uh, break down larger molecule into smaller molecule by using a catalyst. Catalyst. Yes, for example, if we take decane and use a catalyst, we can crack it into pentane, propene, and ethene. So this is known as ca catalytic cracking. All right, now let's move on to the next slide. Uh, alkenes are examples of saturated compounds. So we already know a saturated compound only contains single covalent bonds between carbon atoms. Alkenes are examples of unsaturated compounds. Yeah. So uh, an unsaturated compound contains at least one double covalent bond between carbon atoms. So uh, I'm sure you remember the bromine water test. I'm sure you remember the bromine water test. All right, let's move on now. Now, how does a catalytic cracking work? work. So let's look at this. Now before we go into the diagram, let's just understand what we are going to un uh, see. So in this process, a long chain hydrocarbon is broken down into a shorter chain by using a catalyst. So please pay attention. Stage one. So this is the reaction vessel. A long chain hydrocarbon are heated until they turn into vapor. This feedstock is pumped into the reaction vessel. Yeah, so the hydrocarbon is pumped into it and then we heat it. So you can see the reaction vessel. Now pay attention. Stage two, a catalyst of tiny zeolite crystal is added. Where is it added? It's added in the vessel. 
using a catalyst means the reaction can take place at a lower temperature. Now just watch. The long chain hydrocarbon molecules are broken down into a mixture of, of smaller molecules. This reaction is called cracking. So in the vessel you are seeing this process is taking place. Yeah, the larger brown color hydrocarbon is broken down into three, three smaller fractions. And what did we use in the vessel? We use a catalyst known as zeolite. Long chain hydrocarbons are heated until they turn into vapor. This feedstock is pumped into the reaction vessel. Yeah, so this is the reaction vessel on the right hand side. So what are we pumping inside it? Long chain hydrocarbons. Okay. Now what we do, just look. See, this is the vapor that is being pumped in. So long chain, this is the long chain. How did we obtain this long chain? By the previous process? Yeah. Now let's move on. Stage two. A catalyst of tiny zeolite crystals is added. So you see this the small, small dots? That is the zeolite crystal. It is put into this vessel. Using a catalyst means the reaction can take place at a lower temperature. So now the reaction is taking place at a lower temperature. Now look further. Stage three. The long chain hydrocarbon molecules are broken down into a mixture of smaller molecules. This reaction is called cracking. Did you understand till here? I'm sure you have understood it. So let's move on further. Stage four. The mixture of cracked molecules is pumped to the distillation column where they are separated by fractional distillation. So look at this diagram now, how it is working. So regenerator and these molecules. So during cracking, the catalyst becomes coated with carbon and must be cleaned. In the regenerator, the catalyst is mixed with heated air to burn off the carbon. So the catalyst gets cleaned. So in the left hand side, you can see the regenerator where the catalysts are getting cleaned. Now let's look further. Stage six, the clean catalyst flows back into the reaction vessel where it mixes with the new long chain hydrocarbons and is therefore reused. This long chain hydrocarbon will again be cracked and broken down into smaller hydrocarbons. So this whole process is known as catalytic cracking. Okay. So catalytic cracking can be done in the laboratory 
by heating mineral wool mineral wool mineral wool soaked in oil with a catalyst producing a gas so look at this now try to understand uh, focus your attention to this slide let's begin catalytic cracking can be done in the laboratory by heating mineral oil sorry not mineral oil mineral wool soaked in oil with a catalyst producing a gas so you'll see in this diagram at the lower end of the test tube on the left hand side this is a mineral wool soaked in oil a little far away is the catalyst known as aluminium oxide and then we have a delivery tube and the right right hand side we have a test tube inverted uh, over the delivery tube and we can see the test tube is uh, the test tube contains gas product on the top uh, we call this process as downward displacement all right so catalytic cracking can be done in the lab by heating mineral wool soaked in oil with a catalyst producing a gas